and uh, team really excited to be part of this uh, conversation and uh, happy to share where ui path fits in when it comes to automation and especially the ai driven automation use cases so uh, i'm part of ui path as a global cio industry leader for partnering with our client cios on their automation journey even though i'm part of ui path for 6 months but have been associated with automation space for many years first uh, working with cognizant uh, as a partner of ui path then as a client i was a deputy ci of la county where we did scaling the automation using ui path now as an employee nurturing uh, the platform and then taking it to the enterprise scale end to end automation journey for our organizations and talking about the journey itself uh, i do want to spend a minute or two on the cio uh, role itself and how this role has evolved over the period of time and that plays a critical role when it comes to automation program in the organizations so gone were the days where cios were just considered as a operational leader and a cost center function especially during pandemic and post pandemic this role is changing a lot to the strategic function and cios are part of the business strategy as well as they are the one who are leading the digital transformations within the organization so it is not just the operational excellence it is about how to deploy the quick solutions that's what the board and ceos are expecting from them and pandemic actually gave a boost to enable some of these uh, change activities within the organization and and if you think about what's the top of mind for cios and have been talking to them day in day out as a part of my current role they are actually trying to balance a multiple priorities because they still have an uh, it operations which they have to continue to look how to achieve the operational excellence in their it landscape then there is always a constant demand about deploying the new solutions new digital solutions and it is always about that how quickly we can uh, enable those solutions for our consumers one were the days where you're going to continue working on a multi year program so it is about accelerating those solution deliveries and then employee and customer experience is always on top of mind for cio or be it any cxos so these are the three areas which i typically hear from cios where their focus is and they are trying to balance their uh, effort and bandwidth across these three priorities and the good thing is i see automation as a silver bullet which is providing a solution in all these three areas even though there may be a perception in the past that automation is only here for operational excellence bringing efficiency in operations however uh, there are other two areas which are sometime overlooked and in last couple of years where cio and it teams have really stepped in and started using automation not only to aut automate the infrastructure and operational processes but also to enhance the customer experience using the self service abilities of chatbot as well as bringing customer insights so that the business teams can make a right decisions around business and then thirdly to accelerate uh, the solution deployment itself so i'll uh, i'll show uh, i'll double click on these two areas how ui path actually helps do that so if we think about any organization uh, typically this is how their it landscapes looks like there is always a entry point of service management be it a contact center customer center or the internal help desk and all where consumers customers and employees are interacting with it teams and there is a service management layer and there is application data io and uh, security layers and then the infrastructure or cloud depending on what platform you are using and the first level of optimization which ui path brings in is as a part of a left shift strategy that how we can automate as many tickets which are really coming to the help desk agents so using the self service abilities of ui path using the chatbots the first uh, request automation angle comes in so that we can reduce the number of tickets which goes to the agents then whatsoever tickets which goes to the agents then our auto incident resolution uh, component comes handy where bots actually can resolve the tickets on behalf of agents so our bots have a capability to work with ui as well as have a api integration so depending upon what type of ticket or patterns is this 
our bots can help uh, fulfill the demand. So simple examples could be reset password or providing access control or onboarding offboarding employees. So any pattern based activities which you are seeing in your tickets, uh, bots can actually take take that workload from your uh, analyst and agents. Third area is about the demand reduction where your uh, IT analyst may be doing a lot of uh, mundane tasks uh, or maybe a reporting activities or data aggregation activities. So that's where bots come handy and uh, using a self-service abilities, they actually can uh, perform those tasks on behalf of humans. And we have uh, attended and unattended bots depending upon the use case. So you can actually uh, automate those actions, especially when it is coming to data extraction or data migration or data aggregation, reporting, dashboards, or maybe a periodic notifications, those kind of standard tasks which typically we see on the day-to-day -day basis. And last but not least, the health check automation. That's where the demand elimination comes in, that how we can reduce the effort which uh, the analysts are still spending on top of the existing IT automation tools you have. So again, UiPath is not here to replace any of our performance monitoring tools or AI ops tools, but it is about that once you get the alerts from those tools, how can you use the bots to act on it rather than your IT or security analyst acting on it? And simple examples could be like a brutal force attacks or maybe a vulnerability assessments. When you have those alerts, uh, first is to prioritize those alerts and then after prioritization, you may not have a right integrations with all the platforms, be it a firewalls and uh, the infrastructure or cloud environments. And you could actually use bots and which can be triggered by the events coming from your performance monitoring tools. And that will help you achieve end-to-end -end automation so that you don't need to have an analyst writing scripts or executing scripts based on certain actions. And that's kind of an optimization view where UiPath comes in and help you with a backend end-to-end -end automation. Uh, some of our clients are able to achieve 20% uh, operational savings by implementing bots in these different areas. So that's from optimization side. And then shifting gears from your software development lifecycle perspective. Uh, so in that, what we help uh, our clients is to actually reduce the life cycle itself. If the project is taking a 12 months, can I actually reduce it to a six, month, uh, six months, nine months? And what, what are the various things which you can automate during the life cycle? The very first phase comes in using our process mining and task mining tools, which, which I love it. Christine actually gonna show you some examples of it, uh, which helps you with the discovery process. You may not have a lot of documentation, so it will help you draw the mind map of your whole process as this process, and it can expedite your requirement gathering phase. Then we have uh, 1300 plus uh, pre-built activity packs for various large platforms, be it Microsoft, Salesforce, SAP, Oracle, and so on. So depending upon what type of project you are doing, you can actually use our pre-built activity packs to accelerate the deployment process, development process. And we do have our 200 plus uh, native integrations with uh, these large platforms too. So you can leverage that for your API integration. Then during data migration, many of our clients are leveraging bots for mapping exercise, reading it from an as a system and deploying it in a to be and validation after the migration is done. And then same goes for testing. Uh, uh, Earlier, we started our journey as a RPA testing, but uh, now we have really expanded our capabilities to support the application testing. And the good thing is when you are using UiPath for test automation, you are actually automating your business process itself. So in the production, you can actually then use those bots by your business teams to perform those actions. And last but not least, uh, we do have an integration with our DevOps environment, be it Jenkins and uh, any of the DevOps tools you are using. So that way you can actually trigger the bots either from DevOps and vice versa and configure the environment activities or any scalability needs you have, as well as the reporting capabilities. So these are some of the ways we are accelerating the digital platform delivery process. Now, if I think from a process perspective, 
uh, what type of processes we typically look i mean when we started our journey uh, and it was a very rpa driven journey and it's always about less human judgment very repeatable process uh, copy paste activities volume activities a uh, predictable patterns that's how the whole rpa industry was started few years back and now over the period of time it has really matured and the ai and rpa are coming together to come up with the end to end solutions and where ai is specially coming and the in the automation space is when you have a unpredictable uh, data or when you have a variability in your process or uncertainty in it simple examples could be the documents which you may be reading and you don't want you may not have a standard pattern for your invoices or maybe what whatever documents you are uh, injecting into your systems they may be of a different formats and you don't want to have a bot configured for each and every type how you can make your system intelligent enough so that they can predict the document type and based on that can read out the right fields which are required then the conversational ai uh, through our chatbots for which enables a self service capabilities uh, so that's bringing a thinking process to the rpa using the ai components and that enable us to cover uh, all that unstructured needs in the automation space so from a product perspective how it looks like is uh, we have a end to end product starting from a discovery to build manage engage and the whole governance and measurement process around it and there are different components in our platform which enables these uh, five components so run is something which is standard bots attended and unattended but how we have added the ai capabilities in all the four blocks is starting from discovery think as i mentioned about a process mining and task mining it helps you discover the process it helps you transform the process and continuously monitor the process and keep uh, helping you identify the vulnerabilities as well as inefficiencies in those process then the second component which comes in a build is a document understanding and think of document understanding as a superset of ocr because it's way more than ocr it is not just about scanning and reading the content but actually putting a intelligence into it what type of document it is and what type of information it should extract and how to do that mapping and give you a confidence level based on the different types of formats it comes in then we have a ai computer vision which helps you actually uh, enable automation even behind you vpn or maybe mainframe systems which are not accessible uh, using your front ui not like a web application and all and if you want to enable your automation uh, across those legacy platforms so you can use ai computer vision which can enable that then the third component is about how to then deploy those uh, and scale ais into the ui path platform so we have a ai center in which you can bring in your machine learning model or you can use one of our pre existing machine learning models so we have about 20 plus ml models already available for documents or different types which uh, i'll share in the next slide and you can use those to jump start your ai ml automation or you can build in your own in any other tool and you can import that and ai center can give you ability to automate using your ml models and last but not least bringing human into the ai because you may have a process which in which the human engagement is required chatbot is a great example where you may have your initial conversation with chatbot but based on a certain escalation path or based on certain exceptions human get have to get involved so that's where the ai human in ai loops comes in where our action center and chatbots comes handy so this is how we are uh, covering our different components within our platform to enable ai at each and every stage of the automation journey and talking about some of the ml models which we already have in place uh, as i mentioned the document understanding which is related to documents be it invoice receipts po utility bills and all language analysis uh, language detection and translation needs sentiment analysis needs compre language comprehension needs the qna the conversational ai aspect then we have image analysis where you have to have object detection and classifier and all 
and then the tabular data, be it a structured and unstructured data around it. So we have our ML models available, which you can use to jumpstart your automation. And lastly, uh, to just to give an example, uh, you may be wondering like what kind of uh, use cases where clients are using UiPath in RPA as well as AI automation space. Generally, like uh, one example I would give is one of the large retailer actually used uh, UiPath for resume matching. Actually, during the pandemic, they had to hire a lot of contractors. So we actually helped them with the initial resume matching criteria based on what they defined. And we filtered out their like 800 clay plus applications through our uh, bots. Help desk answers, customer churn prediction, and then there are industry specific use cases, be it healthcare, a patient experience, or in retail, the POS, or inventory management activities, in finance, KYCs, and then the alert classification, email classifications are some of the examples there. So that's all about from my side. Then uh, now, Christian, why don't we actually show us, show them uh, some of the example uh, of how this works in a real life? I'll actually stop sharing, and I believe there are some questions which I'll take it up after. You're mute, Christian. Awesome, cool. And you guys should be able to see my screen. Uh, it should be process mining. Cool, awesome. So thanks, Rajit. So I get to take you guys through um, some of our tools today and actually show you these tools in use. So Jajit mentioned that we have different pillars within our platform. And we're actually gonna be looking at one of the tools within our discovery platform today. Um, so this tool is called Process Mining. And this tool actually works by ingesting backend log data and giving you a way to visually uh, see and view your process, both at a holistic view, but also at a granular level. And so breaking down what we're actually looking at here, and apologies, we are gonna go, uh, we are gonna go a little faster today. What we're looking at is a German bank contacted us and they wanted to learn more about invoice processing. So for this process mining study, we're actually looking at invoices. And we can see here under cases that in the period of 2020, um, using their log data, we noticed that they dealt with about 16,000 invoices. There were 12 different activities that they could do with those invoices, 316 different ways to complete those 12 activities, and about 440 users that actually interacted with the documents. You can also set up some specific KPIs of interest uh, using the tool. So for example, invoices that went down what they would call their happy path, or the expected path in invoice should travel, they had about 63% of their invoices look like that. They also set a metric to say if it was paid within 30, uh, within 30 days, we can mark that invoice as paid on time. So looking at what we're, uh, so now that we've kind of established what the tool looks like, um, we wanna focus here on the process graph. And this is kind of the, the main meat of the tool. And so when we look at our processes, we expect them to run kind of what you see here, you know, what we expect, receive an invoice process, final check approve. But as we actually increase the detail that we're able to see with the tool, we notice that a process is not exactly how we'd expect. There's a lot of different variations in how the process is running, steps are, uh, steps are being skipped. Um, and our process is really different than I think what a lot of us would expect our processes look like. Breaking down what we're looking at here, and zooming a little, little bit, uh, we can actually see here that from the step receive invoice to the step process, about most of our invoices are going from the step to the step. So these numbers actually represent the number of invoices moving between these steps. If I wanna look at it a little bit differently, I can change it to a percentage. I personally like this view because it allows me to see it a little bit more holistically. So we can say about 99% of our invoices went how we expected. About 26% of them though actually went to a deviant step called request data. So maybe when we receive the invoice, we're missing some fields. Um, there was not a PO number attached. For whatever reason, we had to actually move through a step to request additional data from the vendor. Another cool part about this tool is we can also view it from a time perspective. And when we think about this, um, one of the biggest benefits to process mining is helping you identify business bottlenecks, but also areas for automation. And so if we just look at it from a quantity perspective, you know, maybe if we look at the process invoice step, you know, maybe we have a large quantity of invoices going to this request data step. But actually, if we look from this step to the creditor does not exist, maybe it's taking significantly longer. So looking at all of these different variables, not just quantity, but also time it takes to complete these steps, 
helps us paint a good picture of what is actually happening and where should we draw our attention. Some other cool pieces of this platform is this tool is as powerful as the data that your logs have. So the more data in your logs, the more that we can actually visualize. And a good example of this is we can actually break it down by variant. So variant represents what is the most common path that an invoice travels. So again, we have our happy path here. But maybe if we're looking to take action, we want to look at what is the next most common path an invoice travels. And by looking at this variant, we can see, okay, that request data step does seem to be promising. You know, this is the next most common path invoices are traveling down. So what's really cool, and this is an example of how we can use this tool to be granular. Let's say I really want to learn more about this request data step. I want to learn about invoices that pass through here when we would see something use or need to go through this step. So by simply clicking on it, it actually updates our entire dashboard to reflect any invoice passing through request data. So maybe I want to go look at suppliers. So again, I can break this down and say, all right, for this time period of 2020, you know, this vendor was our most common offender for us needing to go request additional data. I can also break this down and view it by the case owner. So I can say, okay, internally, you know, on our team, Macy Hurst processed most of the invoices that had to go through the step. Let's go ask Macy why maybe this was one of our largest offenders. Maybe it's a conversation we can have with the vendor instead of automating. Maybe we just need them to include a field because they keep forgetting. When we're looking at this from an automation perspective too, we actually have this tab called automation. So what's nice about this is we can actually look at our process and the tool from the data understands how many manual processing hours are taking place for each step. You can set an hourly wage. So say like for an hour, um, it takes our team for an hour of their time to process an invoice. It costs us this much. And the tool can actually present back how much are you guys actually spending for each step? So again, the point of this tool is to help you better understand your data at a lot of different levels so that you are empowered to go take action on them. So moving into a different piece, uh, so let's say you know we've identified, all right, process invoice has the biggest potential, let's go automate that. What kind of role playing and storytelling here, when we look at processing an invoice, that step requires actually extracting data from the invoice. Or, you know, manually, it's the person opening up the invoice, looking at the data, and then making assumptions based off that data. Jajit mentioned we have really robust uh, document understanding solutions. And that's actually one of the areas we're going to focus on today. We have a tool, uh, we have a part of our platform called Document Understanding that allows us to use machine learning to extract data from your documents. In this example today, we'll be using invoices, but it can be a variety of different documents. The thing that UiPath emphasizes the most, and this is what we're focusing on today, is making sure that your data truly is accurate before it enters into your systems and actually involving humans into that validation cycle. So role playing a little bit, the tool we're looking at today is where your end users would actually interface to do that data review and also provide feedback into your models. So again, painting a story, let's say every day at 5 a.m. we have UiPath robots accessing in, uh, Outlook inboxes, downloading email attachments that are invoices, and extracting the data from them. Let's say in the data extraction process, the robot actually encounters what we would call a data quality exception. So let's say maybe the robot's not confident enough that a field was extracted correctly. Maybe it's missing a data point. There can be a variety of things. What's really cool about this is Action Center is actually our place for the robot to create work for the human. So let's say the robot goes to process an invoice and notices that this PO field here had a confidence value lower than what we would want. So maybe as an organization, when the robot extracts data, anything less than 85% is something we want a human to review because that was too low for us. We don't want the robot to automatically input that to a system. So our robots can actually notice that this, you know, we didn't hit that threshold and create an action for the human. Your humans will get a text, an email. They can even do this from their phone, from a mobile phone. But your humans are notified saying, hey, could you go review? We give them a nice, easy interface to see the document on the right-hand side, the results on the left-hand side. And let's say for the PO number, it's actually the ship date. It's as easy as them clicking on the document and changing it out. They can highlight over huge chunks of text and change it out that way. So the advantage to using this tool is we're trying to make it as easy as possible for your humans to be involved in this review cycle because we wanna make sure that the robot has the right data to process this specific transaction. But the coolest part is when your humans actually say, you know what, I validated the data, everything looks good. When they actually move past this, 
It sends the data to the robot, but also back to the machine learning model. So it can be retrained with this new data and get better and better over time. So a good example, robot creates this action for the human. Human is notified at their leisure, they go complete this. And once they've actually completed their action, the cool part from here is the robot's then automatically triggered to kick off. And now I can go move forward and take that data and enter it into a system like SAP. So right now, everything you're seeing is a robot automatically typing and clicking. But that's the idea there is our robots are going to handle everything before the extraction, everything after. And in cases where we extract data and we want to make sure it's right, it's really easy using UiPath platform to route that data to the human, have them take action, and ultimately be retraining your model at the same time. We can also handle cases like this where maybe it's not data quality, but a good example here, let's say Snowflake purchases something from us, sends us a purchase order, we notice that our invoice, the invoice sent back to Snowflake was actually higher than the PO requested. We can handle business logic exceptions too. So we can throw this back to the human and say, you know what, the PO is insufficient, please upload a new purchase order here. We can send that purchase order to the robot and the robot can move forward. So really cool ways for robots to actually get, you know, involve humans in our processes, make it easy to have humans be involved in that validation process for machine learning and ultimately make these models better as we move on. So that's all I really had for the demo today. 